is Remy Asa join us. Remy is Egyptian musician and activist. His goal is to bring global awareness for the struggle in the Middle East, for democracy, human rights and social justice. And <laughs> Lars Danzig, that was born of Jewish parents from Czechoslovakia that took escape refugee in Sweden. Um, and today you are professor of social psychology and direct the research program Social Psychology in Radiolication of Mo Modernity and the Center of Childhood and Family Research at Roskilde University, Denmark. Giving a young person, an angry person, an alienated person, meaning is very, very powerful. But is really society, the Western society, prepared for this kind of meaning? This religious meaning that are able and willing to use violence one of my personal experiences is that um, I have a friend of mine, one of my close friends. He was so close of traveling to join IS. And, um, and he was like saying that loudly between us because he was so happy that finally he found the right way. And uh, we succeeded to keep him in Egypt. And uh, that, that succeeded. So m maybe that's uh, one of the ways how we could stop that there. How do we fight that? One of course is to block the animosity, to prohibit all kind of discrimination, all kind of racism on the political level, on the social level, on the personal level, and to, to, to facilitate integration. And to realize that integration and assimilation is not the same thing. Very often we speak about integration but mean assimilation, mean that they, you should become like us. And if you give up all your habits, all your culture, all that you are, if you, are a, if you are a Muslim but not Muslim, if you are a Jew and not Jewish, then it's fine. Then we can accept you. That's tolerance in that one. That is not good enough. Inter uh, integration is something else. Integration is say, well, you are here and I'm here. We are different, as you said in your... But, and we are both here. We, uh, we expect and not only respect, but we accept and we enjoy our differences. On, on the, the other level... Of how to make it less attractive to join these groups. I think what you beautifully show in your film is how these men uh, uh, work for that. They work to, to give another direction. I can understand why the young people wanting to join. Because we have a, a huge uh, depression and um, disappointment and everything. And we're living in a dictatorship. and. Uh, Really, life there is it's not easy and it's not safe. And uh, sometimes we uh, we thinking of taking revenge from a lot of things happening from our governments. So when you can find someone who losing hope and um, no other option to fight this strong governments and dictatorships, except just joining to jihad because they have weapons, they are strong, and um, also under under the background of uh, of the religion, so it's the easiest way to fight. So that's one of the of the main reasons. But when I'm here, and I'm watching people from Europe and especially from Scandinavia, as a, as an example from Helsinki, I started my journey in, in Europe in Helsinki, and I met some friends there, and they told me that they have friends who went there to join IS. And that was really weird for me because I can't find uh, any m good reason for someone living here mm. to join that. Yeah. That's really, I, I couldn't understand this point. Why are people radicalized to that extent? What are the mechanisms for that is the question that do that. Uh, and that seemed to be some pattern in this that we can recognize. One is of course anger or animosity towards society. You feel, uh, rightly or wrongly, you feel that you are outcast, that you don't belong, that your rights are not respected, that you have no hope of leading a meaningful life and all that. That has to do with segregation and with, with being blocked to have a kind of a prospect of life in society. And of course that is what happened to many minorities, more or less in different countries. Uh, in Denmark where I live, uh, it, it's, it's very much so, that, that people, are, uh, people of color, people of, of Muslim background are blocked from having a kind of a decent, because of the atmosphere in society. Uh, but that's not enough. That is not enough to, to create a radical person. You can become sad of that. You can be depressed and you can... So there are many other reactions that, that, than, than extremism. 
But then there is another aspect that is very important, I think. Uh, so, so if, if animosity and anger is kind of the, uh, the push mechanism here, then there is a much more dangerous and much more powerful pull mechanism. And the pull mechanism is, of course, that you are given, if you join a group, a very strong group, a very militant group, you are given belongingness, you belong somewhere. S especially in a radically modernized society where people are individuals and kind of not belong so strongly to their families or to the neighborhood or to their profession, then this is a very strong, uh, there is an urge to belong. With individualization in society comes also kind of as a shadow of that is this urge to belong somewhere. So these groups offer belongingness. When you belong, you become important you can make a difference. And this idea that I can make a difference, even if it ends with myself being shot, but I think that I'm, it's very strong. And, and, and thirdly, and not least important, it is gives you a meaning in life. Mm. You have a purpose in your life, and, but in being outside, then you have no certain purpose. And these three pull effects are so strong that it, it, it keeps people going there because of it. It was a very powerful movie that I think raised a lot of questions, not only about um, religion, power, but also where we are now, the society and the coming future as well. Um, thank you very much, Rami, Dia and Lars. And thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>